Working on being a CFI? Well, one of the things you're going to have to do is build the mysterious CFI binder. In a moment, I'll show you just how to do that. Coming right up. Hey folks, Russ Clark here with My CFI Academy. It's been a while since I've been here. Sorry about the delay, but we've had some questions and had people ask about how do I build my CFI binder? I remember when I went to CFI Academy, this was a very mysterious subject and something that in my mind was going to be a daunting task. What I'm gonna cover here in a minute is how to place that binder together, what to put in it, and I will also show you the layout for a lesson plan. So this is gonna kinda be a two for one video. That way you walk away understanding what really is a lesson plan all about, and then how can I organize my binder and put it together. So without further ado, let's get going on building your CFI binder. So what are we gonna need? First, we're gonna need a binder. I probably recommend a three inch, I think this is a two or two and a half. Uh, you'll notice that it's getting a little bit busy in here. Probably could have used some more space. Next, you're gonna need sheet protectors. I'm sure everybody's familiar with these. You get them at Staples, Office Depot, Amazon. Just buy a box of 100 of them and that way you'll have extras if you need them. Everything's gonna go in here. You're gonna put your lesson plans in the sheet protectors, anything that you want to have in your binder that's gonna help you with reference material. I will actually take my binder with me this evening. I'm doing a ground session with a student and this binder is something that when I built it, I built it to use as an instructor. You're not just building it to get through your check ride. Of course, you are building it to get through your check ride, but then subsequently after that, you're gonna to wanna to be able to reference it anytime you need to. I do have many things in this binder that I can reference if I need to go back and jog my memory or I wanna use something to make a point with this with the student. So sheet protectors, gotta have sheet protectors, gotta have your binder. Next thing you're gonna want is decent paper. Uh, you're gonna want like a 20 pound uh, paper that's a bright white and you're gonna to wanna to be able to print it so it's easy for you to see. Obviously in a check ride, you're under a lot of pressure. You wanna be able to read your lesson plan clearly and not have to worry about struggling with that. But also when you actually start teaching in front of a classroom, it's really nice to have something that's easy to reference. Let's talk about lesson plans real quick. Lesson plans are broken up into page one and page two. Page one, page two. Let me explain. Page one is your outline. And as you go through the FOIs, you're gonna see, you know, successful ways to build lesson plans. There's a whole section in there on what's required for a lesson plan to be complete. The first thing that you're going to need is what is the lesson plan? In this case, I'm going to go ahead and use load factor, structural integrity, velocity, load factor chart. Okay. That's the title of the lesson plan. The objective of the lesson plan is going to be to develop the student's understanding of load factor, structural integrity, and the velocity load factor chart. Folks, when you go to your check ride and the examiner says, okay, teach me a lesson plan on XYZ. When you get on that whiteboard, the first thing that you're going to draw up there is your objective. You're going to write the word objective, and then you're going to write what the objective is. If you don't, they will pretty much fail you most of the time. Uh, under that, I have elements. I have the schedule, roughly how long it's going to take. Equipment that I'm going to need for this particular uh, lesson. Instructor actions, student actions, and then at the bottom, I have completion standards. That's it. That's what I have. That is my outline or what we call our page one. Page one is one piece of paper. You can, if the lesson is longer, you can go ahead and print over on the back side as well to continue to make sure that everything is on one page. Because when it comes time to do the check ride and it's time to teach the examiner, you're going to reach into your sleeve that has your whole lesson plan, page one and page two, you're gonna pull out page one, you're gonna hand it over to the examiner. The examiner's gonna look at your outline, then they're gonna follow along with what you're gonna teach. Page two. Page two can be more than one page. Imagine an airspace lesson being one page. It's just not gonna happen. But we just refer to it as the page two. We say page one, so you can separate that. That's really the outline. That's what you hand the examiner. Page two is the rest of it. It's all the other pages that have the information that you're going to teach. Okay, so for instance, I have an introduction here. I have a development. And then I have load factors airplane design, effects of turns on load factors. Then I have some uh, 
stuff out of the airplane flying handbook. I've got a load factor chart, the effective load factor on stalling speed, the effective speed on load factor, effective flight maneuvers, effective turbulence. We're getting into four pages here to cover this full lesson. That's why it's going to be going back to the schedule. 50 minutes total time. It's a long lesson. It's not something that you can do in 20 minutes, okay? This is a ground lesson, not a flight lesson. So page one, again, recap is going to be your outline. Page two is going to be everything else that you are teaching from. That could be as many pages as you need to put that information in. Page one and page two. Lesson plan. Hope that clears things up. If you have any questions about that, feel free to comment below. We're going to go ahead and we're going to continue moving forward now on how to piece together the binder and what you might want to put in there. Let's go ahead and start building a binder. First, I want to mention no two CFIs are going to have the same binder. Why? It's personal. It's what works for you. What I've done here may not be your idea of what you want for your binder. I will share what I have and you can take it as a guideline and run from there. My most recent student that passed his CFI just this past Monday, Todd, congratulations, there's a shout out to you. His binder looked nothing like mine. This man had a career in the army, sergeant major. He had tabs on everything. His book was much larger than mine. My book is very generalized into areas that make it easy for me to find things. Again, it's gonna be the way you want it. Build it to your likes and make it work for you. All right, moving forward, let's start. I still have some stuff in here from my check ride. I just like to keep it in there. First thing I have is my IACRA for my check ride day. <clears throat> I have my test scores that applied to my uh, CFI. I have my graduation certificate from my ground academy. This is really important for me. I have my uh, special issuance letter. I have sleep apnea. I have to use a CPAP machine, so I have to have this special issuance letter. You may have one. I keep a copy in here. Makes it easy for me to find it. All right, moving forward. We start getting more into the stuff that pertains to being an instructor that helps me, tools that help me. And this definitely will help you. This is the 6165 Hotel. It's the advisory circular that deals with endorsements. I highly recommend you print it out for your check ride. I have it in here. I also went and had a, a copy of it bound at uh, Staples. I also had 6198 Delta done as well. But it's here and I've got some highlights on it, as you can see, that are gonna help me remember what I have to do for endorsements. All right, moving forward, I have, now these are more endorsements. These were actually my endorsements from the Academy for my FOI, stating I had taken the FOI Academy. And, uh, and then I have more endorsement stuff. Moving forward, I have the breakdown of the private pilot uh, aeronautical experience requirements. And no, I did not type this. This was uh, given to me. And uh, so don't get on me about spelling. <laughs> We'll make mistakes. Over here, I've got the commercial. Uh, same thing. These are really nice graphics. They help me out just to kind of cross-reference them. Uh, more endorsement stuff here. <clears throat> These are just endorsement sheets I have. So when I have students, I can use it to uh, reference and check off. I have a page here that outlines what pilots with basic med um, are limited to and what they can fly. These are checklists that you can go through and double check and make sure that your students have the required stuff that they need to take a check ride. Really important. That can definitely bite you, so it's nice to have. Okay, now I have a yellow divider because I'm about to get into, I'm about to get into lesson plans. And you'll notice that my lesson plans are broken up into two sections. The first section are ground lesson plans, and then the second section for me are what are we going to do in the airplane i don't have everything tabbed out i could tell you right in the beginning that my aerodynamics are going to be right up here because that's the first thing i would teach here i have graphics from bob choate one of the greatest academy instructors ever uh this is uh all about cg right here and then i have a graphic that talks about lift and wing plan forms and flaps and high lift devices aspect ratio uh your basic aerodynamics you know lift weight, drag, thrust broken down. And then over here, uh, looks like we have stability. So I have some graphics I can work from. And then you'll notice that my first lesson plan right here, aerodynamics, principles of flight, 
the four forces. And then I just go through and I have what I need, airplane stability and controllability, wings, flaps and high lift devices. You'll notice that this right here is a separate lesson plan. Folks, you don't want your lessons to be so long that your students are falling asleep. Um, this one's use of national airspace, VFR weather minimums, aeromedical factors, night operations, and so forth and so forth. Again, build it the way you're comfortable. If you want to tab on everything, tab everything. In here, I also have some uh, nav logs. Of course, that would probably fall under cross-country flight planning if I go back. VFR cross-country flight planning, okay? There you have it. I have it set up. What am I going to teach in the airplane? Fundamentals of flight. Well, we're going to do straight and level, turns, climbs, descents, the use of trim, and integrating flight instruction. In other words, integrating your instruments into your visual flying. Continuing forward, we have normal crosswind takeoff and climb. I think you get the point. Short field takeoff and climb. Soft field takeoff and climb. And yes, you're going to probably teach this in the classroom first, and then you're going to go out and you're going to apply this out in the aircraft when you do the practical uh, flight training portion. So that's how I have it broken down. So these are this whole section is going to be all about flying the airplane. You'll see the last page I have here is emergency procedures. Ah, we've got <clears throat> commercial maneuvers. So I separated these out from private maneuvers. Steep spiral, Shondells, Lazy 8s, 8s on pylons. There you go. There's your commercial maneuvers. Uh, again, put them the way you want to. I've got a uh, weight and balance sheet in here to teach from. I have a system section, constant speed prop. We talk about uh, minimum equipment list. I got a couple areas I don't have anything here. And then I start breaking into information sheets. These are things that really, really help. I've got a sheet here that has all these different acronyms. Let me turn it this way. <laughs> Aviate, five T's. Uh, approach brief, flight prep, you know, that's NW craft, compass errors, mandatory reports. You can see that a lot of this is instrument. Day VFR, A tomato flames. You guys, you know, you all remember A tomato flames. But I pull it out and I can reference that. Back here, I've broken it out even larger. VFR day, VFR night instrument requirements, A tomato flames, night requirements, flaps. You know, this is uh, something that use it as a reference, helped you to teach. Uh, here's a sheet on the new braking action reports for the FAA. Moving on, I actually put my uh, CFII stuff back here. I've got basic attitude instrument, global positioning systems, VOR approaches, VOR navigation. You'll notice those are two different things, two different lesson plans. Uh, GPS approach. The previous one was actually GPS navigation. This is on approach. Holding procedures. You see how I'm breaking it out. And then I've got um, cross-country section, cross-country checklist, IFR cross-country. Hopefully you guys are getting the point. Bold method. Let's talk about these guys. They're awesome. Um, I keep a couple things here from Bold Method in here to remind me on some things. Remember, these are yours. Decide what's going to work for you. What's going to help you out? I broke out and I put the special emphasis areas on a separate sheet because that's really important. Okay. So that's a CFI binder. It's really not that mysterious once you look at it. If you understand how a lesson plan is laid out and then break it down any way you want to, build it the way you want to, whether it's ground portion, plane portion, ground portion, tab every single lesson plan, plane portion, tab every single lesson plan, and then put any other information in there that you feel is going to be pertinent that's going to help you instruct your students. Little reminders, the uh, acronyms, the special emphasis areas on the sheet, things that are really super important. If the FAA comes out with something that they're really, really hot on, like, you know, runway incursions, like runway incursions is a big one. Maybe have a, you're going to have a lesson plan on runway incursions, but you might have a sheet. You might even print out five or 10 copies of something that you want to hand to your students. That's what you're going to do with your binder. It's your binder. Another thing that I like to put in in my binder is the uh, Pilots Cafe IFR quick review sheets right here. This is great stuff. If you've never heard of it, definitely uh, get on Pilots Cafe. They have a lot of great apps and they have a lot of great materials. I sincerely hope that that helped demystify the CFI binder and what you want to put in it. If you have any questions, comments, put it in the comments below. Really appreciate it if you subscribe, like the video. This helps reach other people that are trying to become CFIs because that says to YouTube, hey, there's interest in this. It's not a channel that's real general. It's very specific. So 
Let's get out there and let's help the community. Let's help future CFIs. The more comments that you make, the more it helps other CFIs and people that are looking to really, really grow in the industry. Appreciate your time. Safe flying. See you in the next video. Thank you.